growing tomatoes and collecting seeds and knowing when I'm growing. This is my tomato project on a certain type of tomato I bought. It's really small, but it's packed with tomatoes and growing them in this fashion, I'll be able to collect the seeds. I could give them away as gifts. I could sell them. You can do what you want. This is the perfect way to collect those seeds and know what you've got from your favorite or rare tomatoes. This is the tomato project. What the heck is a tomato project? <gasps> there you are! Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And this setup I did, which I'm gonna do a lot more, all different styles, is gonna be my tomato project. So what is a tomato project? Well, I told you in the beginning when I first set this up that I was gonna do zucchini and maybe a cucumber and tomatoes. Well, I stepped back and thought, wow, I've had this covered now for about a week. Have a few things in here. I've already got walking onions growing in here and celery and nothing at all has bothered it. And it looks beautiful. I finished the last tote. You know, I have freshened it up like I always do. You know how I add in all that matter, toilet paper rolls. I'll add in leaves, kitchen scraps, everything. And then I'll top it with either soil from another tote or some potting soil. You don't have to put a lot of soil on the bottom because it's all gonna filter through as you water it, but you can put some handfuls as you go. So anyways, it is all done now and I'm gonna do it a little differently, kind of in, well, this one maybe more than the other ones. I've got a rosy finch in the first one and I've got some issues going on and I'll get you down there and show you what's going on and why I've got to get them out fairly soon. Then I've got another rosy finch here. Now this one was in a red cup. I had transferred that one early on and I didn't transfer these and I left them in the small one and you'll see what a difference it is to upscale them into something bigger. So that one's doing really good. And then in here, I'm go I've got a pot, another floral pot back here and I've got it full like I do all my containers with leaves and kitchen scraps and everything in there anything you want to put in there and then I've topped it with soil and then this one is done like I do all the others so I'm going to have one here and I think I'm going to take the one that the worm got and give them a little lift in life and then this one is going to go in here I'm going to kind of situate it where I can get some more pots in here because I'm going to layer other things in here but the reason I'm doing this is this is called a rosy finch. I have never grown this before. It's a compact, it's almost a micro mini type tomato, which is great if you've got a balcony or a small area or maybe in a beautiful pot right next to your front door if you've got enough sunlight. You can put it anywhere and it's compact and it grows tons of tomatoes. Nice size little tomatoes. So I thought, you know, I went ahead and bought it because I've never tried them but they're expensive. They were almost $4 for 10 seeds. And let me tell you something, they sent me not one extra one. In fact, one of the seeds had two fused together, so it was nine. That one I couldn't even get apart. It literally was fused. So there were nine seeds in there, but let's just say there was 10. And I planted five. I know there's only four here, but there's one more on my deck that I planted. And I've got, I've got uh, five more seeds, that one that stuck together, I've got that one too. The thing is, if I can get this to grow here, then and in a covered situation, I know it's not gonna cross pollinate. And this is not a hybrid. A lot of your sun golds are hybrids. You can't really get seeds on anything that is a hybrid. That's specifically made a certain way. They're cross pollinating. They know what they're gonna get. And that's how the growers sell the plants. This is an actual plant. This is a semi-determinate plant. So we'll see how it goes, but I figured why not, then I'll have the seeds, get them in here and cover them. Tomato plants pollinate by the wind, which we have some right now. And the flowers blow and the pollen falls all over exactly, hopefully where it's supposed to go. And then you get your tomatoes that way. Well, if I only have rosy finch in here, I have no chance, hopefully, I never say 100% because you never know what's gonna happen, but let's say 99% chance that it will not cross pollinate with another cherry tomato or a volunteer that's come up around here and I'll be able to collect the seeds and I won't have to buy them again for that price if I like them. So I'm going to get this one planted in here. I'm going to get this one planted in here and those two are planted and then I'll show you how we're going to cover it up and I'll show you what's going on over there. So back here, this poor little plant, hopefully it will make it, is going to go into this pot. Figure to give it a little 
lift in life and maybe it will be happier. It's gone through a lot. Now this one, I'm going to have to tap him out. I want to make sure there's no hidden worms anywhere. Check the soil too, because some of those loopers can get into the soil. I'm going to leave the pot here because it says Rosie Finch on it. I don't see anything hiding. So we're going to get that bottom leaf off. The poor thing doesn't have a lot of leaves, so we don't want to take too much off on it. And we're going to baby it. If it makes it, that would be great. And if it doesn't, I've got a few more seeds that I can work with. I'm going to make sure we press this in really good. I already watered the soil, so this way it's damp when I start. But now all I have to do is give it a little extra drink, and then it should be good to go. And I'll get some mulch around this fairly soon. But I'm hoping it will get a good start this way, and it will be able to spread its roots and grow some more leaves before something else gets it. I'll keep an eye out on the celery. If I see anything iffy, I will yank the celery out. Now here, let's turn, do the other one. Now here I'm gonna put the tomato somewhere here. Let me see, okay, this one is a split cup. I believe it's split, let me see, yep. So I'm just gonna have to decide where, if I wanna put a pot back here, I can move this up a little bit here. I'm gonna stick it in here and then give it a good water. Now this one, like I said, is semi-split. Oh, I only split it, oh no, I split it on both sides. Let's see, let's do this. Actually, let me put that there, so I'll have that there. And now, I don't have to disturb this one other than just taking it out like this. It doesn't have a big root system, so I don't have to worry too much on it. You know what, I'm gonna take a couple of the bottom leaves off and now we'll get the soil pressed around that and keep a close eye out on this. Make sure this is in a spot. So I'll keep an eye out, but I'll know that everything growing in here, the planted tomato plants are all rosy finch. Okay, very simple and easy. Now I just have to make sure everybody gets a little water. I have to keep this well watered, especially on young plants. I'm gonna go on the other side here and get these watered. Once they're established, you don't have to water tomato plants every day. They actually don't mind getting a little bit dry, but I'm gonna keep water nearby. So I'll keep this cup here because if you've got the cup nearby or a watering can, then you're more apt to remember than thinking, oh, I gotta go get some water, I'm gonna run and get it. Just keep a cup nearby. Now we'll kind of take care of this. I may put a hood on this. So this might protect it, especially at night since it's bare. And I'll show you soon how I'm gonna do that. That one's been out here now for days and so is the other one. So it's just a matter of our temperature warming up and then the tomatoes should really take off. Let me show you what's going on on the end one. Now, as you can see, look at the soil here. It's just nothing's there because it's all been freshly done. Pretty much this has been redone, all freshly done. This one's good too, but this one is contaminated. Can you see the contamination? Now I put this here just to layer. It's coming up here, more contamination. Okay, this is tomato. This is a brassica, it could be broccoli, brassica, those look like weeds, more tomatoes, another brassica. Now this I planted, this is a flower of some sort. Can you remember which one? But I planted a few things in here. But the thing is, I'm going to have to make sure in the next few days or any time that I go through and remove all these tomatoes. And really the brassicas too. I can just drop them and pick them. But the problem is, if I don't remove them, they're gonna pull nutrients from what I really wanna grow. And the other problem is, if they got too big and I forgot about them, it would cross-contaminate my tomato plant that I so want to collect the seeds from. So I've got to reach over there and get that one too. Okay, now I just have to keep an eye out. Even more here are coming up. It's, you know, tomatoes grow so easy once the weather starts to warm. They just are just so excited to grow. They pop up everywhere. And yes, I could have moved them, but they're literally all over in my gardens. So the main thing to do now is just pick and drop and don't let them grow. This is nothing but a blueberry. I found it. This one is quite a few years old. 
and it was in a tote and I couldn't believe it was still alive. I put it in here. Now, this is the perfect place, I will tell you, to propagate. I can put cups in here and I'll probably do it later on and I can put geraniums in, in a simple red cup. Just put it in a cup, make sure it's got holes on the bottom and stick them around because this soil is so rich. I can't even explain it that much because I don't understand it myself. But by putting it on one of these containers that I have set up in the fashion in which I do with all the kitchen scraps and leaves and stuff from the garden, I have found that I can propagate almost anything. I have propagated fig trees. I have propagated roses. I have got rose bushes from the same way I propagate in here. I've done all kinds of stuff, all kinds of cuttings, all kinds of brassicas. Anything I want propagates, geraniums, all propagated in here. So I'm going to do some propagating while I've got it going. Why not? Because it's protected. Now all I have to do is reach back because I'm done. This is what makes this so easy. The clips are already there, so I don't have to think about it. But now, see how I, I did cut the pipe, so the pipe fits now, let me put it down. And I will have to put a clip on that side, that's all, or tuck it in, either way works. But the pipe drops into the space here, so it's not hanging out anymore. And now it's so neat and clean, nothing bothers it. Is that gorgeous, look at that. Isn't that something? So now I can take care of my tomatoes for my tomato project. I can propagate in there. And oh, I was going to tell you, what I'm going to do tonight is drop these over the tomato plant, the little one especially, and I'll probably do, well, I'll do them both. Because, let's see if I can do this because I haven't put the clips on yet. I'm doing this one-handed. See? Now by doing that, I'm protecting that tomato plant and it will protect it from any wind because it's been cold again. The other day it was sunny and warm, and this morning it was cold and rainy. The rain is good. Plants love the rain, absolutely. But the cold, so I might protect it a little bit. And then once I see it's established like that one, I won't have to think about covering it anymore. So I hope you got a kick out of this, because this has been working fantastic. I hope you can think about maybe you've got some tomato plants that are special to you, that you may want to collect seeds, or anything. If you're going to do a special type of squash, and you know it's an heirloom and it's a good squash that you can propagate, you know, by collecting the seeds, I should say. You can cover it up. You will have to hand pollinate that. Anything that needs to be pollinated by insects besides wind, you will have to do that yourself. But with this, it's wind pollinated and I can always go by and just tap on the flowers. And if I tap on them, the pollen will fall. You, can, you can't really even see it, but it will fall and they'll grow tomatoes and I don't have to think about any cross-contamination from anything else that's growing around here. So I hope I gave you some ideas. And if you haven't seen this video on how I did this irrigation tubing setup, I mean, think about it. If you went to buy a setup like this, it'd cost you probably close to $100. This thing costs less than 10. So you can even do it cheaper if you've got some netting around. Depends on how you want to set it up. I've got some tomato steaks in there, but you can use that irrigation tubing with even branches from trees. All you have to do is find some skinny branches and it will work. And you know what? You can use skewers a lot of times from the dollar store and you get a, get a whole package, like 50 of them for a dollar. So I hope I've given you ideas. Hope you like and subscribe, ask questions. And I guess that's it. <laughs> have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. This is the tomato project. What the heck is a tomato project? Oh, <gasps> there you are. Oh, and he told me it was powdery mildew. This is no joke. This is not part of the video, but you're gonna see it anyway. So I put my tomato plants in Gary's back room. Look at this. Do you see what I've got here? A looper who is now going to go into the weeds. Do you see this? Actually, that gives me hope. This is not part of it. <laughs> Do you know I've been holding this plant for the past hour, moving it around as I was working on a project, and I did not see him. I looked and looked and looked, and then all of a sudden, I just looked. So this little thing is going somewhere else, and it's not going to be on my tomato project. And this is not a hornworm. Isn't that cool? 
All right, let's get back to the video. Unreal. He actually went to the second one. Let me show you real quick before we start this. This is not, this was not staged. This is how I found it this morning. And I told Gary and he said, it's powdery mildew. I said, powdery mildew may be on some of the plants, but this is not powdery mildew. He wasn't sure what it was. And I was trying to figure out what was eating it. Well, now we all know. So it, I had the two plants, I grabbed this one and I would have him sitting next to each other when I was working on something. And it must have left because obviously it ate most of it. So I actually have great hope for this now. Okay, now let's get this going. I know, what the prop king. I'm gonna go get something. Been wanting to do it, wanting to do it, and it's not happening. So I'll do it now. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, how's he wheel that thing around? It's a ton. And then I'll have to wash the sap off. Sap is not good. So what I ended up doing is I'm propagating some figs in here. This is one branch, I cut it in half. It's already trying to grow on this side, but that's okay, it still has to set root. It's gonna be sitting in here and they just thrive so well by simply taking any type of cup. This has got holes in it. So the microbes and everything travel back and forth and propagation in this system, when you're doing it in a tote, works so good and I don't know why. It just does. Roses, everything I've done this way. And then with this, that's just a little, it's not a two system, it's just a coffee can with a hole on the top. I water it, there's holes on the bottom. This is breaking down like a little worm farm, all full of holes and it will feed my plant. And it's easy to water too. So if I want to do a quick water, I just water it, it breaks down and it feeds the plant a constant plant food. And that's out of an old coffee can. That's plastic, of course. And now I'm propagating in the same cup that that tomato plant came out of. Now, isn't that cool? 